Your favorite couples here so easily accessible yeah. Grab your headphones, hit play, turn up the decibels yeah. Master of the pod like a young Skywalker Shout out to homie Yoda cause great all we talkers The crew is firm so it's love to AZ You signed the 10 feet, scores the competition simply Sure to get you high like some true West Coasters Look at the flick of the wrist, one guard named Leviosa LA is always sunny, come a kind with honeys Pokemon and Dunny, sneak a hype, he's taking money And Rachel rolls her eyes and see Lee made it funny Time flies and now my flux capacity is running. You're not rocking with us, you like a muggle wizard, see? Just stupefy yourself with a wave of wizardry. Like Mario standing still in the left's a moving screen. A world full of nerds, but only two nerdly. Who are we? Don't be sure you ever heard, you see? And we'll be. In your drum like an infectious beat. We come bleed. They like when the short and long hit me. Cause we. The nerdies. The, the nerdly. Who are we? Don't be sure you ever heard, you see? And we'll be. In your drum like an infectious beat. We come bleed. They like when the short and long hit me. Cause the nerdlies, the, the nerdlies. Hey everybody, welcome to the Nerdlies. I am Chris. I'm Rachel. Hi, how are you doing? How is your holiday going so far? Uh, you done with Christmas shopping? We are, mm-hmm. I think, right? We are. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's good. Or, or Hanukkah shopping, or any holiday that you celebrate. <laughs> um, yeah, we're pretty much done. I Hopefully I, I need to ship something to my sister but they only live in arizona so hopefully that'll be very very fast <laughs> yeah i don't think it'll be a problem <laughs> i mean they're get they're backed up like crazy so like there's things that i've had shipped from other states and stuff like that that are just taking forever to get here mm-hmm. um but you know my parents just got their christmas gift by the way oh did they i told you nice but yeah they're very excited nice nice, I think nice. they've already opened it <laughs> nice nice <laughs> that's fine we ended up giving them, uh, I mean, not not really a spoiler if they've already opened it, but we've got them a gift set from Mythic Goat Coffee, our mm-hmm. friends over at Mythic Goat I've Coffee. I already told them that, well, I said Mythic Goat just so they would know who it was, but I didn't realize they'd already ordered from them before. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, I was hoping you wouldn't know what Mythic Goat was, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> not a spoiler, but what I got them is a surprise, so hopefully they'll wait until Christmas to open it. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were just telling me, they're like, oh, thank you for the gift. I was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it. I, I think those guys are great. Our friend Mike and John C. over there uh, run a great company. So if you guys, I know they're not they're not really a sponsor because they're just our friends and we want to promote them. And like, we're literally getting nothing monetarily out of yeah. the orders. But they have but, great coffee yeah. and they have some cute like other things that you can give as gifts. And they have some gift sets, and now they have a holiday blend that has some peppermint in it, and it's so good. So good. We've been drinking that, like, <laughs> the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, check them out, uh, mythicgoatcoffee.com. And if you order uh, with our code NERDLYS, N-E-R-D-L-Y-S, you get 10% off your order. So make sure to do that and support small business. Because right now, especially now, I, sh- I shopped a lot at, like, Etsy and, like, small businesses as much as I could. Um some of the stuff is just so hard to get without going for Amazon and stuff like that. It's just tough. But tried to go for small businesses as much as possible uh, during this holiday season because, you know, it's just so freaking hard yeah. <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. Uh, so going on from that, we had some, I mean, we had some interesting stuff happen the last couple of weeks to yeah. us personally yeah. uh, that we would be remiss to not mention. Mm-hmm. Uh we were obviously i think we talked about that we were gonna go we've been trying to do this bathroom renovation for months and months and months Mm -hmm. and uh finally got it scheduled and just so happens the day before (laughs) uh rachel started having incredible stomach pain i mean i guess you should tell the story really yeah um it was a weird set of circumstances um i had been needing to get a massage for probably over a month And so I... You probably need a massage since you went back to work. Yeah, pretty much. Um, So, uh, yeah, so I finally scheduled a massage and uh, went with um, one of my really close friends and coworkers, and she did an amazing job. And, I mean, I'm not, I'm totally not going to blame her for anything because, like, literally it was just, like, a huge coincidence. And it she may have moved something around, but I really don't think it had anything to do with it. I think it was just weird timing. But I literally, I came home from my massage. My massage was at 1, and it was 90 minutes, so I got home around 3 o'clock. And then I think by, like, 3.30, 4 o'clock, I was just, like, doubled over in pain. Yeah. And it was just, I was just, like... 
it just basically like, and it's weird because like I don't normally have cramps, um, but I can imagine that it was what like really bad cramps feel like, and um, I was just like completely doubled over in pain, and I'd never felt anything that bad before. And I was like, something is really badly wrong. And um, like, I, I don't think I threw up, but I was starting to feel pretty nauseous. And I just was like, I like, I just couldn't, like, I couldn't even, like, I couldn't stand, I couldn't sit, nothing felt right. And I was just like, I either need to go to urgent care or I need to go to the ER. And so he, Chris started driving me to urgent care and we got like close to it. And I was just like, Nope, you need to keep going and go to urgent. You need to go to the ER because this is like yeah nothing I've ever felt. Like it was such an intense pain, and um, so like he he had to drop me off because there was no other way to like yeah just because of restrictions park. too. We had to. I I couldn't even come with in with yeah. You. I tried like to. I yeah I came in but. and then he tried to come in like to, to like you know come in with me and they were like nope you can't come in. So literally, like, I said goodbye to him at the door as they were wheeling me back into the back in a wheelchair, and then I didn't see him again until the next day, Um, because I, making a long story short, I found out that I had a huge cyst on my left ovary. Um, It was twice as big as my actual ovary, and so it had degraded the tissue so much that they had to completely remove my left ovary. And I'm lucky that that's all they had to do because it was possible that because of the complications, they could have had to have removed both of my ovaries. Um, But um, like, luckily, they only had to remove the left one. Um, But I did have to do like a a lanthroscopic surgery where laparoscopic or laparoscopic. Yes. And um, so they had to put a basically they had to make three incisions um one near my right ovary one near my left ovary and one in my belly button for the camera and as far as i was told they basically like they kind of go they went in one side and like pulled it in through and out the other side i guess is how they do that yeah yeah, um um and, it was crazy because yeah. your doctor explained it to me over the phone yeah. as to what was going to happen before um, before the surgery, pretty much. And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, know, and she explained it to me yeah. too, but like, you know, they she kind of they kind of try to give you worst case scenario. They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. they're like, so best case scenario is we go in and we remove the cyst and that's it, and you keep both your ovaries. You could potentially lose one ovary. You could potentially lose both ovaries. You could have excessive bleeding and you might have to have a dr- blood transfusion yeah, yeah. and there's also the very vague possibility that you could the blood transfusion could be tainted and you could get AIDS like this is literally things she was oh, telling wow. me and I was like okay cool I just want it out I'm like yeah. <laughs> you know um, <clears throat> so <laughs> anyway uh, but luckily none of that happened and it was supposed I mean I guess is as clean as it could have gone it went and they just but yeah they did have to end up take the whole ovary out which is like I said I knew it was a possibility so I wasn't like super shocked when they told Mm -hmm. me they took it out um but you know I'm glad I still have the other one so that I can get the hormones from that um that's like my I had a follow-up with my doctor today and he seemed to think that I don't I shouldn't need to have any other yeah replacement but we'll see um but yeah, I'm very, I'm, I'm just very grateful to the doctors at Huntington Medical Center. Um, all, pre, all except for one, <laughs> had one kind of shitty nurse. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna chalk that up to her having a bad day, and I'm not gonna like, like, I, I thought, of, I thought about trying to like, I don't know, like at least tell my story, and then I kind of did, and I kind of didn't. I just had this one nurse who was just for some weird reason just decided to be extremely cold to me and um while I was crying in pain she basically was like trying to tell me to suck it up and it wasn't very nice um (laughs) but uh other than that every other nurse I had was wonderful and super caring and very attentive and helped me tremendously and I thank all of them and I know they're all under a lot of stress and yeah especially right now yeah, and I 
I like I never know exactly what I could do to help, but I would love to do something just to thank all of them for their help because Yeah. Like they were all just tremendous and especially my overnight nurse. I felt so bad for her because she had to hear me throw up a lot. And <laughs> and and I felt bad cuz she wanted you know, she didn't want me to be in pain and she was trying to help, but you know, nothing was really helping. So, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm doing much better. Um, it was luckily like these, I mean, I, I just still can't believe how fast it is that you heal from these things. Cause like I felt bad for maybe like two or three days and then now I, I really don't feel anything anymore from it. Like there's a little bit of discomfort, you know, occasionally like when I'm bending in certain ways, but like. Other than that, like everything's That's healing good. really well. The incisions are extremely small, and so like there's ba- barely any like downtime or healing time. Um, so uh, yeah, and I'm very grateful for my gynecologist because she did my surgery and she did a great job, and yeah. she's very she's very good at what she does. And um, yeah, so just I guess if you can like donate or. Um, I don't know if Huntington Hospital has any sort of donation thing or anything yeah, like that. But, but I if guess you I have mean, anything just to like, support, yeah, if you can, your frontline workers yeah, do that. If, yeah, like I said, yeah. I don't know what they accept you know, nowadays with COVID and everything yeah. being what it is. But like, just you know, in any way you can, even if it's just like if you know someone who's a nurse or a doctor, just like give them lots of good energy <laughs> and get, if you can give them presents or flowers or anything but yeah yeah, yeah yeah they deserve a lot of respect and yeah I appreciate them very much uh yeah and then but then like and so then yeah so that was all going on while Chris was at home dealing with the <laughs> the contractors and thankfully that all got done and it looks beautiful and yeah, it just did kind of suck, like, the day after my surgery, having to wake up to them, like, pounding on the door Oh, yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it was okay. It was fine. I was just sitting on the couch anyway, so it didn't really bother me. Um, but now, once you actually get to take a... Get, uh, now, once you actually get cleared to take a bath, it's going to be fantastic. So. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. Yeah, because I still, like, because of my bandages and stuff, I'm still not supposed to take a bath yet. Um, but, it's supposed to be submerged in water. You can't. Yeah, m- I can take the, a shower. I just can't take a bath. And taking the shower is already amazing. You can't live a mermaid life yet. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> soon, soon. Um, and that was the other thing too. Is like before that, like with my tattoo, I couldn't get wet either. So it's been a long time since I got to take a bath. Um, I think I did get. I, well, it's funny because I think the one day I did take a bath was the day that I was not yeah, feeling yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. And it seems like that's always my MO is I end up taking a bath and then I can't get out of the bath or I, <laughs> cause that was the last time I went to the hospital was cause I had a kidney infection and yeah. I had taken a bath and then I immediately threw up after taking the bath and then had to go to the ER. So yay. Um, so yeah. maybe you shouldn't take any baths anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just cause like anytime I'm feeling shitty, that's like my go-to is I take a bath and mm-hmm. like it doesn't always help. Sometimes it makes things worse. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, so I know a lot of people were worried, and I appreciate everyone who was worried and that sent their love around for me. And, um, yeah, I just I appreciate all of you guys' well wishes, and I am definitely feeling a lot better. Um, oh, I was going to say, then, like, almost a week to the day, I ended up getting food poisoning. <laughs> Yeah. So I yeah. was, I and I was like <laughs> freaked out because I was like having the same level of nausea that I had when all this shit was going down. So I thought something was wrong, but then my doctor was like, "No, it sounds like you just have food poisoning." So I was like, "Great, that's awesome." What so, else can we add to this smorgasbord of yeah? So like I'm already like on. I'm already still sore from these incisions, and now I'm throwing up like every 15 minutes <laughs> for two days. Uh, yeah. So, but I'm finally slowly on the mend from that and good yeah things are better <laughs> good 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 i'm glad i'm glad you know, you know people were very worried and you know thank to everyone that reached out and like offered help and stuff like that if they could um obviously it's just tough right now to have any real help since it's you know i don't want to risk anybody else yeah uh and that was the shitty thing and i just feel bad for like 
anyone right now who's in the hospital because like yeah. you're all alone like you can't have any visitors like you can't have anyone with mm-hmm. you going through these things and like it was just it was really scary to be told that I was gonna have surgery for the first time in my entire life and that I didn't have I wasn't gonna be able to have anyone there to like be there for me and yeah yeah and I can't imagine like if it was anything worse or like you know cancer or anything like that like having to deal with that on your own like yeah. I just can't imagine having to deal with that um and like so that was all this was scary enough and you know really kind of jolted me a little bit um and you know it was just scary because you know it's like anytime you go under for surgery you never know what's gonna happen so it was kind of scary but um obviously the doctors were really yeah. great and yeah did a good surgery and I'm feeling good. So. Got you through. Yeah. Got you through. Um, but yeah, it was super weird just to be here knowing that like you're in the hospital and I'm like, I can't really, I, all I can do is text you. I can't yeah. like call you on the phone. Get, and that was like, the thing too is like I was in so much pain and like they, yeah. they, they did the IV and then they had to take me to get a CT scan. Yeah, it was just, it was just a clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For lack of a better term. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I couldn't even, like, text you for a while because, like I said, they had, ta- they had to take me to get a CT scan and then take me back to my room. And then they mm. were giving me morphine and stuff. And so I was, like, barely cognizant. And then I was like, oh, I should probably be texting him that I'm okay. And, like, but then, like, my, my phone's, like, way over there. Yeah, and I'm, like, yeah. trying to get to it. But my stomach's, like, killing me. So, yeah, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough run. But... We got through. Things, things we got are through. better. Things are things better. Are better. <laughs> um, but glad you're back. Obviously, can't really do the show without you. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, among other reasons, to have you back, not just the show. Obviously, <laughs> obviously. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you kind of uh, like me too. <laughs> I kind of like you too. I think you're kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's just it was just an interesting experience. I don't I don't envy anyone going through that right now. And I know a couple of people that I I know a couple of people who have had to have people hospitalized or all that type of stuff. And it's just it's not a good feeling. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we got through. Glad Huntington Hospital did such a great job taking care of you. And yeah, just you know, big ups to any medical professionals out there. We we mm-hmm. know a few of them. Just you know, they're doing the best they can right now. Yeah. Um, with what they have. Um, but anyway. We'll move on to some this week news, which there is plenty of, Mm -hmm. and it is, I mean, okay, so we'll start off with the smaller thing between the other huge thing, and then we're (laughs) going to talk about about Mandalorian a little bit, too, because we're leading up to the the finale, just as a synopsis of what this episode is going to be about. So one of the bigger things that happened before we, uh, since the last episode, is that um, DC, Warner Brothers, HBO Max... Uh, <laughs> announced that all of the movies in 2021, starting with Wonder Woman, that were supposed to be released in theaters, are going to be on HBO Max, mm-hmm. which is pretty wild to me. Yeah. Uh, what did you think when you heard that? I, I, I we've been waiting to watch Wonder Woman for a while. Oh yeah. So yeah, and that's gonna come out in like two weeks mm-hmm. in December uh, on the Christmas. Mm-hmm. So when we get to watch it, like at our house. Yeah, it's so, like, dope. I'm like. Well, I I like how Philip DeFranco said it. Like, it's like, yeah, we understand, like, you know, it sucks that, like, you know, movie theaters aren't going to be able to, you know, this may hurt movie theaters. Because we do love the movie theater. Yeah, because obviously, yeah, it's like, obviously, we'd all rather do that. But, like, things being what they are, like, it's not really safe to be going to the movies right now. Mm -hmm. So this is... I'm just so glad that they're making this an option so that people who don't feel safe going to movie theater can watch it at home. And so I think it's amazing. And I think it's like he said, I think it's the future. I really do. Like, Mm. I feel like, again, as much as, you know, there's obviously once we can see things in the movie theater again, we're obviously going to want to. Um, it's just right now we can't and a hundred percent. Like, so yeah, I don't think I can replace going to see like, a Star Wars movie in a theater. I can't mm-hmm. replace going the experience of going with a communal group to go watch a Bond movie, any of those tentpole yeah. movies, or even like an art house movie. Mm-hmm. You just you just can't really ex- uh, replace that experience unless you like somehow have 
a home mm-hmm. theater that's that quality plus the yeah. people that you want every single time that are hyped up to go yeah. see the and movie. And it's like, like, and if as long as Wonder Woman is as awesome as I'm assuming it will be, I would love to go see it in a theater when I can. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I just like I don't care how safe they tell me that it is. I'm not gonna go right see it now. In the no, yeah. I'm not seeing anything in a theater. Um, but yeah, so I'm I was personally like super super stoked that they were they decided to do that because yeah yeah it's a big deal and it's i think like you know like i said like phil frank says i think it is the future of movie going is like that you know they're, they'll release things at on in theaters and vod on the same day and i think it works really well because it's like there's some people who don't want to go to the movies or you know, yeah, yeah. just feel more comfortable staying at home, and I don't feel like that should be punished. You know, and it. I think it's. I don't know. I just think it is a really smart move to do to do that and yeah, be able to I, have it. Both I think right ways. now it's the decision that had to be made. While yeah. while I don't think that they thoroughly, because uh, obviously we talked about Philip DeFranco, he does a very good deep dive into what the ramifications of like the business side of this is. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they thought that all the way through Mm -hmm. (laughs) the business side of it but Mm -hmm. as a consumer i don't have any complaints like if i have the if i have the access to hbo max great now Mm -hmm. i get to watch all the movies that i was hyped about and will support them and actually pay for hbo max yeah like and get money into an industry Mm -hmm. you know and i think that's that's pretty wild um do i think that maybe they could have done what disney did and like paid asked for a premium of like 15 to 20 bucks yeah Mm -hmm. i definitely think they could have done that Mm -hmm. i think a lot of those movies would have done pretty well with a 15 dollar charge or whatever for like the early access to the movie Mm -hmm. like i think you know there's plenty of people who'd pay 15 bucks to watch wonder woman at their house and just have it for before it releases on hbo max properly Mm -hmm. you know so uh, i i see kind of like uh, there could have been a way to do that to make it monetarily more fair for some of the studios yeah. and some of the contracts. But as a consumer, I'm not. I can't really complain if yeah. they're they're just guaranteeing like, hey, you're gonna get to see all these <laughs> at yeah. home. I'm like, okay, I'm down. Yeah, cool, cool, nothing. No, I can't complain. Um, but obviously, the other huge, huge news is this insane Disney Investor Day that <laughs> happened yeah. uh, last week. So um, much stuff. An insane amount of stuff was announced at the Disney Investor Day. I don't even know where I don't really know where to start, but uh, we'll start with some of the Disney like centric stuff. One thing that I was super excited about, and we can't, we literally cannot cover every single thing that no. was announced. Yeah, there's so much. We can say the like we could say the titles. We will never be able to put comments on everything because this would be like a four hour show. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing that I know me and you are very excited about is the announcement that there's a Chippendale movie. Yeah. With John Mulaney, Andy Samberg as I'm Chippendale. Down. Totally. Rescue down. Rangers, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That was my childhood. I'm down. Let's do this. <laughs> and uh, obviously, Andy Samberg's uh, writing partner, Akiva, I can't remember his last name. Schaefer. Uh, Akiva Schaefer. Yeah. He's writing it, which it I'm like. Just- Amazing. So good. Yeah. I'm so excited to see what they do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like, I, I can't imagine. The only duo I could think of that would have been in any better would have been Schwartz and Middle Ditch. Yeah. Is what we were thinking. But mm-hmm. Schwartz is already part of Disney with D- DuckTales. Mm-hmm. So I almost said DickTales. <laughs> 100%. Just wanted to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> on there with DuckTales. So he can't. He probably doesn't need another franchise. Plus, he has Sonic. Yeah, so, he's he's well. He's set. <laughs> he's well set. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But obviously, I mean, do you want to start with Marvel or Star Wars? Let's go let's go Marvel first cuz yeah, Star Marvel Wars first, we're going to yeah. lead into um Mandalorian, I think. Mm-hmm. So, Marvel has an insane slate. We already knew they had a bunch of stuff cuz last Comic-Con 2019, we, they showed up with a bunch of like titles that they knew that were coming out. Blades coming out, Shang-Chi is coming out. Um we already knew that it was going to be Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. We knew that uh, we were going to get WandaVision, Falcon, and Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Now we finally got a first look at Falcon and Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. Soldier which is incredible. Um, it looks really, really good. WandaVision yeah. obviously coming out early January, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
they give us the first look finally at the what if series Mm -hmm. which i am so excited for that's one of the that's one of my favorite comic book series of all time that's actually like of everything i think i'm looking forward to that the most oh really because yeah i think the i think it just looks really really intriguing and the animation looks really yeah and that's the thing is like the animation just looks beautiful i'm like yep totally down (laughs) yep um but yeah like those the cats are right now fighting underneath the Christmas tree. Or they're just hanging out under the Christmas tree. It's like, oh, God, it's bright and down here. Bright down here. <laughs> um, but yes, they announced that a bunch more Disney Plus series are coming out. Mm-hmm. And the crazy part is that Disney is just going all in on the movie actors. That's the wild thing to me. Yeah. It's not like they're going to recast whoever and just be like, oh, this is a TV series, so whatever. Yeah. They're actually bringing in... Samuel Jackson and Ben Ben Mendelsohn, I think his name right right, um, for Secret Invasion, they're mm-hmm. gonna have a series. Yeah, uh, they're gonna make a Armor Wars series with mm-hmm. Don Cheadle. Yep, as War Machine, mm-hmm. amazing. They are doing a Hawkeye series, obviously already announced with um, with Jeremy Renner and now Haley Steinfeld, uh, Stein Steinfeld. Um, as uh, Kate Bishop, mm. which is a huge fan favorite. They just announced, uh, officially announced, finally, Tatiana Maslany, who is from Orphan Black. <laughs> they are just climbing all up in the tree now. I think they're going crazy. Anyway, um, ta- they finally properly announced Tatiana Maslany as uh, mm-hmm. She-Hulk. I still don't understand that casting, but whatever. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think, I think she's a great actress. Um, no, I but- think she is too, but I just... I'm like, I just, I just assumed that they would go with like someone more like buff, I guess, yeah. is what I was thinking. But I mean, anyone can get buff. I'm sure she can get buff. So that's... I mean, Mark Ruffalo is not buff. So yeah, yeah. I think, I think we're fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So there's that, and then Moon Knight is obviously coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, there's rumors that they're gonna try to get Oscar Isaac. Haven't heard anything else about that. He that just got cool. he just got uh, cast as Metal uh, Snake from uh, Metal Gear Solid. Oh, so that's right. I, I don't know if that. he's still on the market for Moon Knight. Maybe, but maybe we'll I don't know what these the schedules look like. <laughs> um, but obviously the huge ones that I thought were cool. Uh, obviously Captain Marvel two is coming out. They're mm-hmm. gonna re- do uh, do more Captain Marvel, and it's gonna include the Ms. Marvel from the Ms. Marvel show. Mm-hmm. Which I think is cool. Yeah, that's awesome. They are going to do an Ironheart series, which is a fan favorite series, I think, from Marvel Comics with mm-hmm. Riri Williams. And uh, Ammon and the Wasp, they're making another uh, one. Quantum Mania, mm-hmm. which I'm like, that's kind of funny as a title. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone pointed out that Ant Man is actually in Quantum Mania, like in the name Quantum Mania. Ant Man is in it. Oh. <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and obviously the other huge, huge announcement is that John Watts, who directed, um, Spider-Man, uh, Homecoming and Far From Home is helming the Marvel reboot of Fantastic Four, the yeah. MCU reboot of Fantastic Four. Yep. So we'll see if they can do it right. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm very excited. I was talking to, um, my friend Brandon, Brandon, who's been on the show before, um, we were talking about Fantastic Four, and that movie, I feel like, I mean, I don't know that this is if this is a weird opinion or not, but, like, the first ever Fox fa- Fantastic Four, I still like. Yeah, it's such it's a not, goofy, it's not, fun not movie. not terrible, but it's not great. <laughs> it's just, if you look back at it, yeah. and then, like, some of, this, some of the decisions they made, especially with Doctor Doom, is really not great. Mm-hmm. But the dynamic of the family is really good. Some of the casting is iffy. I didn't. I still don't really like Jessica Alba as Sue Storm. Mm-hmm. I thought Ian Griffith of, as uh, Mr. Fantastic was fine. Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm was fine. I like. I obviously like Chris Evans. Just general things that Chris Evans <laughs> yeah. as Johnny Storm was great. Mm-hmm. But you know, they they made some missteps here and there. But those two movies were fine. Mm-hmm. They're not horrible. They're just of the time. They were yeah. like late 90s early 2000s movies they're Mm -hmm. just they they just didn't have the heart to the ones that we know now Mm -hmm. they're not as whatever so like now seeing 
that they're going to take it in the MCU's hands, I'm very excited. And mm-hmm. John Watts has proven so far to be a very good filmmaker for Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I wonder who they're going to cast. I still, like, I'm on the John Krasinski and Emily Blunt train <laughs> for Mr. Fantastic and Sue Storm. Yeah, but I, mean, I could see it. Who knows? We'll see, yeah. Maybe they youngify Chris Evans, just bring him back again. Uh, <laughs> even though he's already, he doesn't look that old. No. Obviously. He's no. just a little bit too bulky now. No, they're not gonna be able to <laughs> No, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna pull that <laughs> off again. You only get I think I feel like you get to be two you get yeah, to be yeah, two yeah, Marvel yeah. characters in your lifetime and usually one of them is CG. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And that's it. That's true. Um, um but <laughs> that doesn't even touch who I didn't even touch the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. There's the Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy holiday there's... special. <laughs> Captain out. America, or there's Falcon Winter Soldier yeah. that's coming there's out. There's an I Am Groot series Yeah, that's coming out, too. Um, there's just so much stuff. Like, this was... <laughs> I like seeing all the memes about the Disney Investor Day, where it's like... <laughs> it's that Kylo meme where he's, like, yelling more. Yeah. <laughs> more! 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 And they just get, keep kept giving t- it to you. Mm-hmm. I was, li- like, literally just scrolling Twitter and, like, refreshing Marvel's thing. And I'm like, I don't I don't even know how I'm supposed to keep up with this. Yeah. Like, I no, don't know. It's insane. Like, if this was a panel, this would have been, like, seven hours long. Because mm-hmm. people would just be out of their minds and just exhausted by the end of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People would be screaming until they were hoarse. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god! Like people would be fainting. They'd be yeah. calling nine one one and shit. These fanboys can't handle this shit, man. Because like I, I'm just watching. <laughs> like obviously, Twitter is just so rapid fire. It's like mm-hmm. you, they're watching it live. This is the first time the investor day was actually streamed to everybody. Because mm-hmm. usually it is just for the investors, and then kind of leaks out to some of the uh, media outlets. Mm-hmm. But this time, everybody was watching it. All of the news outlets were watching it. So I, I could see that Disney was like tweeting as they announced them in live mm-hmm. on the thing yeah. and then like minutes later it's like all the analysts or like reporters like retweeting it and like oh my god this what this too oh my god this too it's like yeah. dude how are you supposed to keep up yeah you can't um, you literally can't i i missed a whole bunch of stuff i'm sure mm-hmm. there's gonna be a, somebody who's gonna be like oh why didn't you talk about this like i forgot yeah like there's, there's so there's much so stuff coming much, out yeah yeah, there's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Like, yeah. so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, which I'm excited for. I think of mm-hmm. the properties to make a holiday special, Guardians of the Galaxy with James Gunn, let him do a holiday special yeah. with that. that. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, obviously the bigger, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's bigger. I think it's the same, like equal. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> tons of Star Wars, tons of Star Wars series. Yeah, I was um, not ready. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I didn't yeah. realize there was this much. So, obviously, um, Mandalorian uh, is going on right now. Last episode is coming out of this season, this Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about that series in a second. Um, one very, the very intriguing one to me, uh, there's three of them. Visions is very intriguing to me, which mm-hmm. is um, an anime show. Mm-hmm. It's like Star Wars, like other stories, but animated by Japanese animation Mm -hmm. folks, which I think will be very, very cool. Uh, Rangers of the New Republic, which sounds kind of fun. It's like kind of like Mm -hmm. a space... It sounds like it'll be like a space cop show Mm -hmm. uh, for X-Wing fighters and all that type of stuff. Um, Cassie and Andor. That show was already announced, but we finally saw some footage of that. So excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. He looks really, really good. looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, uh, dro- this droid story show should be interesting. Not really sure what they're going to do with that, but that sounds sounds cool. Uh, Lando <laughs> is getting a Disney Plus show. Mm-hmm. But there's a, I haven't read fully or seen any report fully whether it's Donald Glover doing Lando for the series or if it's just going to be stories about Lando and maybe it's animated. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I haven't hoping, said enough about it yet to know what yeah, it's going to be. I'm yet. hoping it's Donald Glover because I'd love mm-hmm. him. But uh, we'll see. He's probably a busy guy. Probably a busy guy. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi's show, which was obviously going to happen with Ian McGregor. But the big announcement was that they are bringing back Hayden Christensen to be Darth Vader in the series. Or oh Anakin or whatever. Fuck which yeah. we're like, oh man, this is the opportunity. Like This is what we get now that Disney has it and has faith mm-hmm. in the product. That 
they will take these characters and give them like the gravitas that they needed to have from episodes one through three. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I think that that's what they did with Clone Wars. They had faith to do another season and give you even more story of that. They have mm-hmm. faith in the story to give you all these side stories with Mandalorian. Like mm-hmm. I, I think that's amazing. I'm I'm very excited to see how how Hayden gets and Anakin gets br- brought back in that Obi-Wan story. Because I don't know what they're going to do. Whether he's going to actually encounter Vader for the first time again. Or, like, it's going to be flashbacks and he's going to get to be Anakin again. Yeah, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. yeah I'm excited, though. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll be really cool. Because um, they said it's supposed to be ten years after the Clone Wars. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ex- yeah, I'm super excited to see, like, what they come up with. Pretty that. crazy. But I mean, I'm mainly just excited to see fucking oh, you Ian and McGregor yeah. like as Obi Wan again because that's all I could think of when they announced it. I was just like, "This is a dream come yeah. true!" Like we've been asking for this for so long. Give like, him a movie that is worthwhile. Like give him something that's worthwhile. Oh Even God. like I kind of wish they would. Like I mean, I'm now, gonna cry. I just know yeah. I am. Like it's gonna be so perfect. I can't wait. Like, yeah. And even like people, like, I wish. I wish we could have, just like they're going to do with Jane Foster, with mm-hmm. Natalie Portman in Thor, they're actually going to give her something else to do in Love, and, in Love and Thunder. And we didn't even talk about that, that they've just, they confirmed Christian Bale as the villain of Love and Thunder. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I just think that's cool to bring these characters back and get them more, uh, it just, the, they didn't get the opportunity to be the best they could be in certain movies. Yeah. And now they get an opportunity again to hopefully reprise that role and kick ass in it and give us a story that like feels right within mm-hmm. the world mm-hmm. and like corrects those wrongs. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I definitely don't feel like they gave Obi-Wan his fullest due. He was just kind of like, you know, he was kind of the side story to Anakin and he really deserved more than that. <laughs> and Especially they, just they, how they tried to it. write it a little bit yeah. in the in the Clone Wars, um, and the Clone Wars helped so much to make yeah. anybody care about the prequels. Yeah, I think definitely. Yeah. Um. So I yeah I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's the honestly like that and the Cassian show are like I'm super super stoked. Yeah. yeah. Well, also the Visions show just because yeah. it's possible they might have a Saj Ventress. Well, that's so. not. Well, I oh, that's think not Visions. That's, that's not like, Visions because that's the animated one. The oh, one I'm sorry. I'm thinking yeah. Yeah. That might have vi- uh, Saj Ventress in it. I think I. That's what I'm going to keep mm-hmm. an eye on. It is the Acolyte. Oh, the Acolyte. Yes. The Acolyte is yeah. supposed to be High Republic era and the kind of like rise of the dark side mm-hmm. so if anything has asajj that could be the closest one i yeah. think personally yeah um so i'm I, we don't know any details about it besides that it's gonna be a show um mm-hmm. i think they might have re- uh, talked about the showrunner i can't remember the name um but that what one i'm gonna visions keep my one again visions one is a anime like ja- uh, star wars stories but in japanese animation oh okay, okay which cool. is gonna be super cool very cool yeah um, obviously, Bad Batch is going to come out, mm-hmm. um, which we're kind of eh about. I, I thought they were cool in yeah. parts I mean, of Clone Wars. Like, but- the only thing that kind of piqued my interest is that um, it seems as though they're going to have um, Ming-Na Wen's character yes. from yes. Mandalorian involved. And that was kind of like, oh, okay, maybe that might be cool. Yeah. Um, but in general, like, of the the last season of the Clone Wars, like that was like the first half of, of the season of the seventh season. And I was just like, eh, like none of it really like resonated yeah. super well and with me. They were me. cool characters, and, but it was brand new characters that we yeah. didn't know. And like, I cared more about the story of, um, Rex and like the other guys. Like I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't really care about the bad batch particularly. Mm-hmm. They were just side characters. Yeah. So I mean, we've already kind of talked about it. Yeah. That like really the main thing was like the last like three yeah. episodes of that were like <laughs> a movie on the, the in perfect, their own perfect movie. They, they literally were just like the perfect Star Wars movie. Yeah. And yeah. like I like yeah, <laughs> that is my story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Um, and I could take or leave the rest of that season, but mm-hmm. um. But I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I'm willing to give it a shot. Like I said, I don't know that I'm going to really, it's going to really resonate with me, but it may just not be for me. Yeah. And that's totally fine. And that's what there's, it is. Because like, there's a lot, there's of the, a lot of a lot of these things that like, 
I can just already, I already know that I'm like, I, I'll give it a shot, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be for me. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. And that, you know. Because there's going to be enough for you. That's yeah, the thing. That's like, a, yeah. That's the thing. They're, they're spreading their, their I, that's a terrible phrase, but spreading their seed <laughs> of Star Wars and Marvel they like are, yeah. all over so that yeah. there is something for every flavor of fan. Mm-hmm. Loki is going to be a weird ass show. WandaVision yeah. is going to be a weird ass show, but they're different yeah. flavors of weird. Yeah. Like reality like bending Loki versus ones, time bending. The Lo- Loki one for me seems a little bit more intriguing than the WandaVision, which is weird because Wanda and Vision are like my two favorite characters, I think, of all of the Avengers. But for some reason, this show just looks too weird. And I'm just like, eh, we'll see. It's not my it's not my jam. It might not be your jam. Like, so, you're just but not- that's fine. Like, and that's the yeah. thing is like. <laughs> like and I guess we'll get into it more with like the other Star Wars yes, news, yes, yes, but yes. like I just I don't know I and I've I've said it before and I'll say it again too is like I just don't understand how or why people get so upset when like people don't like certain things or they like certain things like. Yeah. It's just like you don't have to get so upset that I don't like the thing that you like. Like just get over it. Like and, and I don't know. I is- just like there's I've had like not a ton, but I've had several comments on things that I've said recently and where people like they seem like they're getting super offended over the fact that like I don't like what they like or that I'm not giving something a chance or whatever and I'm just like First of all, I'm like, I don't think you have as much time invested in the things that I'm invested in. And so I don't think you understand why I feel the way that I do about certain things. That's fine. It's like, you can like what you like. I'll like what I like. Just like, you don't have to get so butthurt and upset about something that I don't like. Like, just fine. You don't like it or you like it. That's fine. You like it. You have fun with it. You go do your own thing with it. Well, and that's the thing that we've always (laughs) talked about on the show was that there are things that we don't like. I'll never tell somebody like, oh, God, I can't believe you like that. Yeah, it's like, if you like, like it, fucking fine. But, like, don't, like, like I, I don't, like I said, I'm not going to name names or anything, but I've had a couple people in my DMs recently who they just seem like they're so offended by the fact that I don't like the thing that they like. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that's offending you in some way, but I just, like... There's a lot of stuff that Rachel there's, likes that There's I don't things like. that I've got, like, you know, I'm very passionate about yeah. because, like, you know, because I have a lot of time and energy invested in both the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and that got me through a lot of shit that, um, that just, it did, it got me through a lot of shit, and it, like, it was really pleasing to me and I really loved those stories and I was passionate about those stories and so there's things that they're doing now that I feel like are kind of fucking that up and so that's offending me and so I'm not a huge fan of some of the things that they're doing with the Star Wars stuff but that's fine because it's not really for me I think it's for like a totally different group of people that don't know anything about the Clone Wars or Rebels or anything they just know Mandalorian and they know a little bit about some of these side characters and that's fine and it's like and if you like if you're totally stoked on these changes they're making then have fun go watch those shows but like but don't get in my face about it. Like, just don't get in my face about things that I don't like that you like. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> Any, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't <clears throat> get that. Um, uh, one thing I'm super excited about, too, uh, before we start talking about what we are going to talk about there, uh, is Patty Jenkins, obviously director of Wonder Woman, both the first movie mm-hmm. and this one that's coming out, mm-hmm. is doing a passion project with Star Wars. <laughs> And doing Rogue Squadron, yeah. which I'm like, oh, badass. I'm so <laughs> excited to see an X-Wing fighter. That's actually going to be a full movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm stoked on that. And I'm stoked on Taika Waititi's venture as well. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to do. I have no obviously. idea, no but idea. like, I think, yeah, I'm super stoked. Just, like, we yeah. <laughs> both famously like are not huge fans of Thor Ragnarok, yeah. but Taika's vision on mandalorian has been great oh, like so he's good, been yeah. very very good with what he's done with star wars mm-hmm. so 
barring like him doing a Thor Ragnarok with Star Wars, like I'm still cool with knowing that he's going to be at the helm because it yeah. seems like he has the love for it. Like, well, the thing is, like, he has a very hu- particular humor style is too. like a very strong part of Star Wars. It always has yeah. been. So that I'm not like that doesn't seem weird or off. It's just hopefully it's in the right amounts. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, I that's, think that yeah. there are filmmakers that balance humor, humor and seriousness very, very well. Mm-hmm. Taika can do that. Mm-hmm. I just felt like he didn't do that with Ragnarok. Oh, no, that's he definitely how did we not, felt like he, he definitely did, did in not Ragnarok. do that in Ragnarok. Hey, no. He tried. There were certain scenes yeah. that felt like he tried, but it was not the right balance. No. Um, but he can. He can do it, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited to see what he what he does with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm um, willing to give him a chance. I just I just fucking love that he tweeted like, "Oh man, I'm as a Star Wars fan, I'm already upset about how I'm gonna screw this up." Yeah, <laughs> like, fucking perfect. I was like, as long as you're taking that like tongue in cheek approach, yeah. I'm all in for yeah. it. I'm willing to give you a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's so funny. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, like you know. Try not to take that too. Try not to take the stuff too hard too much. I'm not gonna like, hate him on, on him as a thing for one one movie that I'm yeah, like, no. not that like, big of a fan of. Yeah. And still, I still watch Lord Ragnarok. It's just not my favorite. It's not <laughs> on the top of my list. Um. Anyway, so the last one, obviously, uh, is one we're kind of gonna talk about because we're gonna talk about Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Um. Is they are gonna do an Ahsoka series mm-hmm. with Rosario Dawson? Yes, uh, are. <laughs> we are watching. We we've been watching Mandalorian pretty much every Friday as soon as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, we had one day where I waited to like we had to wait till I got off work, and I'm like I'm dying to watch this show because I'm just so scared I'm gonna see something uh, before. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, overall, uh, we're, we'll talk about that episode, the first episode that we saw um, Ahsoka in, mm-hmm. and then we finally learned. I mean, uh, let's okay. Spoilers <laughs> in case anybody's not caught up. I don't know why you would still be listening to the show if you haven't caught up. Yeah. But, um, From now on, we will talk about the last three episodes of The Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. Episodes five, six, and seven. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so Ahsoka shows up. It's Ros- Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka. We finally learn Baby Yoda's name, mm-hmm. which is super cute. I love I the love name. I love it. I love Some it. Some people don't like the name. I don't get I know. It. I don't understand why, but like... Grogu. Or they're like, oh, I didn't need a name, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, he's going to get one, so just shut the fuck up. <laughs> His name is Grogu, and he's a fucking... Yeah. I, I, I think it's perfect for him. I think it's adorable, and I love how excited he gets when he oh, hears the it. Oh, perk. Yeah. He's like, huh? <laughs> me <laughs> yeah love it love it so much love it yeah so um and so listen like i i'm not gonna say i hate rosario dawson as ahsoka because i don't i don't hate her as because i think she did that a, character i feel like she yeah. like kind of like she said she definitely did her research and she got some of like the you know i think she got the essence of her as much as she could um from watching the Clone Wars, but just in my personal opinion, I, because I watched all of the Clone Wars from the beginning and I watched all of Rebels and she, she's played by Ashley Eckstein, if you don't know. Um, and I actually know quite a few people who are very close friends with her, um, because of her clothing line, uh, her universe. And she, She's just a phenomenal person in general, which I think just is why it makes me so sad that she got snubbed in this way, um, because it's very well known and she's gone on record saying that she always had hoped that she would get to play Ahsoka in every way that she could, which up until this point she has. Um, And... Uh, but again, like I and I get that, like, you know, everyone thought that like, oh, Rosario kind of I don't I mean, I still don't think she really looks like her. Um, a lot of people felt like, oh, yeah, she looks like her. She would like do a good job as her or whatever. Um, I never really saw it. Uh, I mean, I mainly because it's like she's an alien. So I just don't think she really looks like anybody in particular. And she has huge eyes. So it's like no <laughs> one's really going to look like that in general. Um but uh, I just 
my main thing is like I'm just sad that they like didn't even really I mean they may have given her a shot I don't know what the audition process was like I don't know if they just automatically were like well the fans want Rosario so we're gonna give him Rosario or if they actually tried her out and they didn't think she worked with it or whatever I don't know but I just I just personally as a fan of that character I feel sad that the and also be, mainly also because in the previous episode or I think it was two episodes before that they had Bo-Katan come back yeah, and yeah. they had the original voice actress do Bo-Katan which again I understand like she was an accomplished actress before you know being a voice actress and so and this is the argument that people have been throwing at me well she's an accomplished actress and so how do you even know that Ashley Eckstein can act I'm like well because she's a voice actress and she's been doing this character for this long she knows how to embody this character like she's been doing it for like yeah like over 10 years like you can't tell me that she can't play this character like but anyway um and then I and then just to see that they're actually going to do a series again where it's Rosario and it's not her is also like double heartbreaking to me because like I said she just I just know that Ashley Eckstein just like Ahsoka is her like she is just Yeah, she lives and breathes that character she, for sure. She is that character and so it just personally makes me really sad and as a fan of the show and you know of both of the shows I'm like I would just, I, I would personally, like, I'm interested to hear Dave Filoni's side of it and to see, like, if he, like, how he feels about it or, because that's my main thing is I'm slightly disappointed in Dave Filoni that, like, he didn't give her a chance to do that. And again, he could have, I don't know, again, I don't know anything about the audition process or whatever, but um, I still think that she, she would have done a good job. And I've seen her, like, she's cosplayed Ahsoka before. I think she looks just as good, if not better. And, like, I know some people are, like, saying, like, oh, well, like, they wanted it to be a more mature version. I'm like, they're literally, her and Rosario Dawson are literally two years different. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Ashley Eckstein's 39, Rosario Dawson's 41. They're not that different in age. So it's not that. (laughs) Um, But, like, I just, in general, I just... I didn't find Rosario's portrayal of Ahsoka to be what I believed it should have been. And I mean, it's some of it's the voice, some of it's just the portrayal. Um, And also there is a big part of it. That is the fucking headpiece that they put on her is atrocious. (laughs) I've seen way better on cosplayers. Like it should have been like three times longer than it was. Cause it's just it's just so weird that like because in Rebels they show her yeah, as an yeah, older yeah. woman and she has because it's like that's part of like Twi'lex and um, her species which I'm blanking on at the moment. Um, I will look it up. Uh, <laughs> I, it's t- Togruta. T- yeah, yeah, Togruta. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's her species, but that's like that's in it. It's just it just bugs me. It's just bugging me still. But like that's part of any species that has head tails, they grow as they get older (laughs) that's just what happens and with her like by the time she was at the end of of um of rebels which is where this is supposedly picking up she had head tails like past her tits and now they're like up by her fucking shoulders again and like and i get like some people are saying like oh you know they probably did it for you know because she has to do these crazy like stunt flips and stuff and i'm like ever heard of cg like, yeah, have her wear the, the smaller ones as stunt tails and put them in in CG if you can't do it. But, like, and also they just, they look so creasy and gross and, like, they didn't even do, like, the painting very well. I'm just, like, it was just so disappointing to see her come in the screen like that. I was just like, why? She's supposed to have these fucking long-ass head tails because she's old. Like, she's old. She's not, like, she literally has the head tail she had when she was 14. Yeah. Like, that's how long they are. I'm sorry. I just, it, that just bugs the shit out of me. And I know I'm not the only one, because my friend Becca, who actually goes by Becca Soka, because she fucking loves Ahsoka that much, too, she kind of agreed with me, or she was the one who made the point that, like, yeah, like, they could have been, they could have been way better looking. Yeah. Even if they had been a little bit longer, it would have been better, but, um... Yeah, so anyway, I just, personally, I just don't, I don't feel like Rosario is my Ahsoka, and 
that's fine. And like, I've had had someone like kind of try to make some kind of like argument that like, well, like so many people have played Batman over the years and no one cares. And it's like, yeah, because Batman's been around for like almost 100 years and Ahsoka has been around for 15 and only one other person has ever played Ahsoka Tano and that's Ashley Eckstein. That's it. <laughs> so like, I don't know. And like, I just, it just bugs me. And like, I've had people be like, well, like I said, like they are questioning her acting chops and I'm just like, I just wish they had given her a shot. Like, I just, I I don't know. That's still just my thing, is I just really wish they had at least given her a shot. Well, the thing I hope is that hopefully if, if, when the Ahsoka thing happens, hopefully she gets something in that. That's what I hope. And I know it's not going to be... That would make me even more upset, though, honestly. Like, I I would be, I I would feel like... Because can you imagine, like, get it, like that happening they're giving your character a show and they're like here you can have a little side part like i'd be like fuck that <laughs> i mean like, i don't no. know it depends on what the part is and stuff like that too so I mean, maybe it's something integral and that she can do maybe, I, I don't know i mean i don't know just, i i would really love to have her me. do it, rubs it me the wrong way i don't like it i i totally understand i yeah. i loved her as ahsoka i think that it was a little bit it was definitely a little bit jarring to see rosario as it because it's you know, you imagine a certain voice, you imagine a certain stature or whatever, mm-hmm. and you just imagine a certain way that, that Ahsoka looks. And that's like the tough, the really tough thing about going from an animated show to a live action show is like sometimes mm-hmm. you do have to make those decisions. And we don't, mm-hmm. like you, to your point, we don't know what went into this decision. Yeah. And I mean, the- and it makes sense, obviously, that they got the original guy who did, who, who did the, the clone troopers. Yeah to be Boba Fett because that's literally who he is. Yeah. He's a clone of Boba Fett. And he's um, the right age or he's, now. Yeah, or, he's, or Boba Fett is a clone of... He's, Django He's Fett, a modo yeah. fed, modified clone of Django Fett. Um, but I thought... I love that they got him back because literally the guy who did the voice acting for all the clones was doing a very, very good interpretation yeah, yeah, yeah. of that actor. And so, like, that's why I, like, obviously he would be the one to be that character. Yeah. Um, and again, like, bo was bo and, like, so, yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah, I, I get what you mean. I totally get what so, you mean. So, it just, like I said, it just, mainly, I was just like, it just r- rubbed me the wrong way. Like, I, that's, that's why sometimes, like, fan castings kind of, I'm not, I just, I don't know. Like, sometimes they can be great, and sometimes it just doesn't hit the mark the right way. And like, like I said, I, I kind of get it, but at the same time, I just, I don't think she's, she just doesn't seem like the right fit for me as, as Ahsoka. Um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, nah, that's, that's just fine. my opinion on it. And you know, you can castrate me if you want. I don't care. <laughs> like, I just don't, I don't care if you don't like it, just move on. <laughs> yeah. Well, We'll move on to the na- the last two episodes, which were uh, heavily, heavily Boba Fett centric. Mm-hmm. Uh, not Boba Fett, I mean, he was featured in both the episodes, mm-hmm. which I think was fantastic. The first oh episode God. where he comes in, so amazing um, with <laughs> the so oh gosh, the way that he they made his fights look so good. They brought Ming Na Wen back, who is great. She is always badass. Um, literally just, every single time. I, uh, I just love that they're like helping him, and like it's like this awesome fucking badass team. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. like a really good proportion of lady to dude. It's just mm, it's so good. <laughs> and I love the new Boba Fett paint job. I just want to say, you know what? It was I fucking it was, love. It. it was jarring to me at first because the newest episode yeah, he comes obviously. back. Yeah, he he gets the armor from uh, Mando from uh, Din Djarin. He gets the Boba Fett suit. But it was all tattered. Mm-hmm. But obviously, between episodes, they actually refurbished his his suit, and now it's clean, cleaner Ooh. than it's ever been. And I'm it like, oh, so beautiful. Man. I was just like, oh my god, like I, oh, it's so good. It yeah, looks so good. But just seeing him like put it back on and like use the fucking visor and yeah. then like use yeah. the fucking ships, like. Oh, oh man! The last episode so that we beautiful. saw, um, obviously, is the episode where they had to go to um, this planet to try to get Imperial codes to find uh, Moff Gideon mm-hmm. because Grogu is now under the 
under the arrest of Moff Gideon um, and being experimented on to get his midichlorians. So he, uh, which is what I assume he's getting experimented on for. (laughs) But uh, yeah, they go to this planet and you finally get to see the interior of Slave One incredible never seen that before um you get to see badass boba fett being like super clean and the highlight of the episode for me is bill burr comes back which like famously i I, in my opinion bill burr is like a total nerd hater yeah (laughs) like he's said so much shit about i mean he's just a shit talker just in general he's a shit talker dude he's a great a shit talker yeah so he, he's from Boston. That's what yeah. they do. He shits on nerds That's all the all time, <laughs> which is hilarious that he's on this show. Um, they gave him a spot in the first season. He was good. They didn't. They used him well enough in the first season. But this episode, I was like, holy shit! Bill Burr can act. Chef kiss. <laughs> Chef kiss. Like Bill Burr was my highlight of this episode. The, so that just good. that scene where um, he's talking to that former commander that he was serving under Mm -hmm. and about the battle that he was in and all the troops that were sacrificed that is and i was talking to uh i'll mention my friend brandon again he we were talking about and it's like this is the most tense conversation i've heard i think in any star wars show like Mm -hmm. it's the realest it's ever been the way that he's just the look on his face the weight of his words and like it you just know okay this is leading up to something yeah. And he really, really sold that. So I want to be, get, just give oh big props to Bill, Bill Burr. Burr. Yeah, for for being amazing, uh, amazing in that episode. And so good, holy crap! I was just like, I was joking with Chris. I was like, I feel like he was probably just like begging them, like, <laughs> like I don't know if he has like nieces and nephews or like. Oh, people were giving him shit stuff, all over like, his. So Twitter. many people were giving him shit when he dropped Baby Yoda in that one episode. So I bet he was just like, please give me redemption, please. Like, so many people are shitting on me. Like, give me redemption. And man, did they give him redemption. Like, holy fuck. They gave him a whole, just an entire arc in one episode. It was great. It was perfect. That's the thing about this show is that you get these side characters for little, little bits. And it all leads to one thing for Mandalorian, like letting Mando go from episode one to episode eight and have having him have an arc and have little things. But each of these little side characters, they all get an arc during that one episode. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really, really cool about this show, like that anthology series. Like you're really widening the world, seeing how all these other characters flesh out the world that includes Mando. Mm-hmm. Um so I, I think it's cool. I'm I'm so amped for the last episode. Yeah. I can't believe it's already going to be the last I know, episode. Oh, it's insane. I'm like, it's kind of flown shit. by. I know. But um, it's been great. I, I I the quality of this season has been phenomenal. They really stepped up their game. They brought back characters that were super um, effective in what they were going to do. Especially like we said, Bill Burr in this last episode. Um, maybe not. Rosario in your opinion but um, I thought in general Ahsoka being at least for me Ahsoka being in one episode I totally am okay with that being one episode because if she was in more which I was kind of like oh maybe she's in the last couple episodes of the season the way that they let her off saying like she's not willing to train because she knows that Grogu has these like attachments to Mando Mm -hmm. like he that's his kid he calls him the kid all the time Mm -hmm. i need to get the kid back yeah like that they both have an attachment to each other now oh they do yeah and it'd be very hard to train train him to be a jedi in the traditional sense while having these attachments because that's what leads to the dark side um but yeah like i i thought that it was effective to bring her in for one episode because i think if you bring her in for longer fans in general are aching for ahsoka content which is why we're getting a show Mm -hmm. right and if you do that the show becomes the ahsoka show by proxy Mm -hmm. already by in the last three episodes Mm -hmm. which is what you don't want to do you want the show still be to be to be the mandalorian just with a guest appearance by ahsoka yeah which i think that's the that was the right move Mm -hmm. i felt like at least in that way i was very happy with what we got of Mm -hmm. ahsoka in the one episode we got of her Mm -hmm. because any more of it it would have just been a distraction 
Yeah. For oh, 100%. the rest of the like, season. I, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely glad that they did it the way they did. Because even if, even if it was Ashley Eckstein, right? Like, if it was perfectly done the way, I still would have, I, I still felt feel that way. Like, mm-hmm. I f- still feel like she can't be the focus. Same with Bogotan. If Bogotan yeah. was in the entire, like, arc no, of the no. series, we can't even do it. No. She has a bigger arc than Mando does. Yeah. Mando has a very singular mm-hmm. <laughs> arc of, like, I need to save this kid. Mm-hmm. Um, Bogotan's trying to solve all kinds of shit right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, like... Well, she wants that fucking sword back. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I would think of is that he, might, she, he, might, he might call for her to help. She might come back for yeah, the last episode. because she wants that fucking Darksaber, which she deserves because it's her fucking Darksaber. Yeah. Um, what was your... You, you had some sort of theory about the last episode or, like, a thought... Um, or, or did you have a theory about this episode that we just saw? Um, you had said mentioned something, but oh I don't God. know if you even remember. I probably should have written it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, well, I know that like someone had said something about uh, them having a theory about those, um, which I guess now we kind of realize that those, tr- those like crazy like black like uh-huh. droid things yeah. are just droids. Because I think some people thought that, like, there's some theory going around that they thought that the, those, like, because when they showed them originally, they were just, like, in these almost, like, test tubes or something. Yeah, and yeah, walked so through you them. kind of thought that they were and something And so we else. thought that, like, someone was saying that he thought that maybe, like, those Mandos that had been, quote unquote, killed, where you just saw, like, the stack of mm-hmm. armor, that they thought maybe they had, instead of been killed, that they had been, like, just repurposed, repurposed and, like... <laughs> turn into like super soldiers or something but obviously they were just like these crazy mecked out like mm. s- like trooper robot type things or trooper droids um um but now i like yeah i can't honestly remember what i was thinking was gonna happen i mean the thing is the episode, i i but... feel like with the last episode right grogu reached out to the force mm-hmm. he reached out to the force for a long time oh yeah that was yeah and... that was what i was thinking so i <laughs> i i mean i think either way either way it goes i think it's t- in my opinion i think it's either going to be ezra yeah and that's where I'm. I think I'm leaning hardest is that it is going to be Ezra that comes. It would make the most sense because we've leaned so or, hard into Clo- Re- Rebels and Clone Wars. Or that it's Luke. Yeah, and Luke takes him. And Luke to, takes him to the academy that he starts. Yeah, those are the I I, I like both of those uh, both of those theories. Yeah. Um, I know that some people are like. I uh, want that dark horse theory of like maybe it's Mace Windu who survived somehow. <laughs> like I I've, I've heard that thrown out there. Yeah. Um I've heard uh Cal from the uh Fallen Order mm-hmm. uh series. Mm-hmm. Um and a couple of other uh Jedi that um could possibly be it, but mm-hmm. Ezra makes the most sense to me mm-hmm. because we're just so leaning into Rebels and Star Wars Clone Wars stuff. My only in this episode, my only thing seasons. is that because I, I feel like, apart from just people calling him Baby Yoda, I feel yeah. like he has to have some kind of connection to Yoda somewhere in his lineage or bloodline. Yeah. There, he has to have some kind of... Because like, there's not that many of his species, clearly. Yeah. We so don't, I don't know that he's literally <laughs> Yoda's son. I don't think that that's yeah. the case. I think that he is just like a descendant of... Either a descendant of Yoda or a descendant of Yoda's species, obviously, but... Maybe like I, a cousin. Like yeah, a third but or because <laughs> my opinion is because Luke is so like has such a strong connection with Yoda, I think if someone else from Yoda's species were to reach out, that he would be the obvious okay. one to reach out to him. Um, Interesting. And like, just how fucking cool that would be if it was Sebastian. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean that's the fan casting everyone wants, right? To see Sebastian Stan as. <sighs> As young Luke, or he looks so much Luke. like yeah, him. He, does. he looks so much like him. Like young Mark like, Hamill for sure. And that's like that's the thing is like that makes sense to me because it's like obviously you can't get Mark Hamill to do it unless you de-age him. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I feel like he's he's a good choice. Um. But that's the thing is it's such a like pipe dream. It would be so fucking dope. Yeah. But I don't know that that's really something they would do. So that's why I'm leaning more toward Ezra. Um. And. Also, mainly because Ezra is so tied 
to um Thrawn. Thrawn. Yeah. And that's obviously that's Ahsoka, the last time Ahsoka throws it. throws that out at the end and that's who she's been hunting with like yeah. uh with like Bo Katan and uh um Sabine. Mm. Sabine Wren, um, which would also be dope if she came back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I I'm leaning more toward Ezra at this point, yeah. just because yeah, yeah. like I said, because he's so tied to Thrawn and because it seems like that's kind of their next like because that yeah because he was already kind of like trying to lead these initiatives mm. and stuff that it seems that Moff Gideon is in the same kind of boat as and I have a assu- I am assuming that they have some kind of connection that hasn't been yeah fledged out yet but that's my my thinking is that it's it's there's going to be some kind of throng connection so I feel like I mean there's got to be I mean he's, he's got well and that's the thing too is a, a lot of people are saying that they think because of there's been so many loath cats. Uh-huh. Within this series, just in random places, because mm-hmm. they haven't been to Lothal, but you've seen like at least two Loth cats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and because Loth cats were so closely tied to Ezra, like a lot of people think that that's like, like yeah, that, and I think that's a that's like that's kind of been smart. the foreshadowing of oh, this is <laughs> like we're going back to Lothal. So, and I think that's the smart call. I think that's yeah. the call that everyone should be making. Um, mm-hmm going into this last episode if you've watched Clone Wars or Rebels like that's yeah. the that's the person that's most likely going to arrive mm-hmm. um but we'll see we'll see how it goes I'm very excited to see how how it all wraps up for this season I don't I wonder how I mean honestly I also wonder how they're going to continue for the third season too because mm-hmm. who knows what the next quest is like he's going to get him back or whatever like what's going to happen mm-hmm. with with Grogu and Mando, or just Mando in general, and that's the guy who plays him. I feel like he could. He's about the right age. To oh, where possibly, he could be. possibly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I would die. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So we'll see. I'm very uh, yeah. hopeful for that. But um, but anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, we also, I, I did want to say, we did get an Oculus Quest from our friend Mike. Yes. Um, big thank you to him for for getting us that. A really, really big surprise for us when yeah, he said he I was, was going to do that. I couldn't believe um, it. It was like winning the lottery. So thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. I've thanked you a million times already, but thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Um, obviously, it's amazing. <laughs> I, I would ask you how you feel about the the mist thing on it, but we've already have a video on it, so please go yeah. to YouTube and check out the I video. I played mist in VR, y'all, and it's amazing, yeah. so go check that out. So check it out YouTube on a uh, YouTube page, youtube.com slash the nerdlies. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I had for this week. I don't know if you, do you have anything else, any other thoughts you want to throw out there before we hop uh, off into the sunset? <laughs> Not really. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think we're good. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, uh, I mean, there's plenty of stuff to talk about in coming weeks. So we'll learn more and more about these things from Disney. Disney's doing a whole bunch. We didn't even mention the Lightyear movie with Chris Evans. Good <laughs> Lord. Oh, my God. So much stuff. <laughs> so much stuff. We're going to get so much content out of Disney Plus, and it's kind of just wild that yeah. one I mean, just wild that Disney has they need so to much spread stuff. it out. <laughs> yeah, spread the love a little bit. I mean, HBO's oh, and fine. I also I don't know if you saw today, but uh, shout out to our friend Morgana Ignis. Yes, yes. Um, her show Earth to Ned is coming back in January for new yes. episodes. Yes, woo! I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's such a good show. We're if you guys so... haven't watched it yet, it's on Disney Plus. You can watch the first what like six? Seven? I think it was ten. I think was it ten? 10? Jesus. Um, yes, ten episodes, um, I, and there's more to come uh, very soon. So check those out. Yeah, Earth to Ned is a, an incredible Henson production with our friend Morgana. Uh, really, really happy for her, and I know that she's super excited to get the ne- uh, the next episodes out. We were talking about. I don't know if we could have talked about it during the episode. Yeah, I think I we think talked we about it off the air, but we weren't really allowed to say that yeah. there was more coming. But there's more coming. Yeah. So <laughs> January first. Start 2021 off right with uh, Earth to Ned. Um, But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys have a good rest of the week or whatever, your holidays. Um, Stay safe out there. Obviously, be healthy as you can. Wear your mask. If you're traveling, be very, 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 very cautious and safe. Yes, Yes. wear your mask at all times. And try not to gather. Try. I know we know it's hard. It's really, really hard. I mean, we it's hard on us too, obviously, uh, with all this stuff. But you know, you're just trying to keep everybody healthy. 
That's, you keep them in your lives so that once we are clear clear of this thing, we can see everyone. Exactly. Yeah. So, take care of each other. Be good to each other. We love you all. And we hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. If you like this episode or any of the episodes that we've had, please do us a favor and go on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher and write us a review and just subscribe to us on any of the platforms that you have. You can follow us on our social media at The Nerdlies pretty much everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, uh, Twitch, and uh, what's the words? Instagram. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, The Nerdlies. We do need more subscribers on that so we can lock in our our channel <laughs> and stuff like that um rachel's social media is lady reagan l-a-d-y-r-a-e-g-u-n yeah on twi- twitter instagram and she has a patreon account yes. that we are still shooting stuff for and uh, um also i have a facebook uh i don't have a facebook facebook anymore but i have a Facebook page that is Lady Raygun Cosplay if you want to check that out. Yeah, and that's also Facebook.com slash Lady Raygun. Um, but yeah, come follow us and uh, do all the things. We'll see you soon. And thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you. Bye. Go forth and be nothing. Who are we? The dopest show you ever heard. You see, it will be. They need a drum like an infectious beat. We complete. They like in the short and long hit me. Cause we. The nerdies. The the nerdy all we don't be sure you ever heard you see it will be in your drum like an infectious beat we come we they like when the short and long hit me cause we the nerdies the, the nerdies